Hey guys, so today is going to be a video about what I wish I knew about Poshmark before I started. This is going to be a great video for the newbies on Poshmark who don't want to go through all the same mistakes that I made. I'm going to share all the things that I wish I'd done differently, things that I did great, things just basically tips, tricks, myths about Poshmark that a lot of people think some apps that help me, just all different information on how to make money on Poshmark and things that I wish I knew before I started. I started on Poshmark a couple years ago. I had an old closet I sold a bunch of stuff on, then I deleted it, and then I started a new closet later on. And then eventually I did reselling full-time for about a year and a half. I am now back to part-time. Doesn't mean I don't know how to make money on Poshmark. It was just other things that caused me to go back to part-time. So I've been meaning to make this video for a while. It is going to be super helpful for anybody that's new. I will share all the mistakes I made so you don't have to make them and it will save you time and money. First off, if you do not have a Poshmark closet, you use my code, which is rebel underscore rose underscore co. I will put it up on the screen. When you sign up, you get $10 for your first Poshmark purchase, just like a $10 credit, and then I also get a $10 credit. So yeah, it would help both of us if you use that code. And then my Poshmark and my Instagram are both rubble underscore rose underscore co. If you follow my Instagram, I post what solds, tips, hauls, lots of nature stuff, a whole bunch of stuff on there. And it would be very helpful if you are trying to become a reseller. And then the other thing I was gonna say is if you like this kind of content, if you are interested in reselling Poshmark, thrifted clothing, whatever, if you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell notification, you could see all my videos. I have lots of stuff and I'm going to be making more content. And if you liked, commented, and subscribed on this video, that would also help me out a ton. So I'm going to get started. I have my computer here in front of me. I have a little bit of an outline, but if this video is a little all over the place, um, I'm sorry if I think of things as they come. That's just what's gonna happen. So if you are a seasoned reseller, if you still watch this video, just because it helps me with my watch hours and the algorithm, I am trying to monetize. I'm not making money off any of these videos and I spend a lot of time on them. If you liked, commented, subscribed, watched the whole way through, that helps me out a lot. The only thing I need to get monetized is watch hours, but I need like over a thousand of them. So every little bit helps. What I wish I knew on Poshmark, so many things. So the first thing is, what is Poshmark? You can sell women's clothing, men's kids and now you can sell home decor beauty and now electronics but um mainly clothing is what sells on there I've sold like two or three home decor things for almost nothing some people have great luck selling that stuff I don't know why I can't sell anything but clothes on there but that doesn't mean that you can't you can sell all kinds of stuff on there the first thing that I wish that I had thought about is my username so you can change your username you just have to email them but I at first I just use a uh, something random, but now I'm Rebel Rose Co. But the only problem is I have, so I have a Poshmark, eBay, Mercari, um, Instagram, YouTube, and everything is a variation of Rebel Rose Co. So like my YouTube has no underscores. My Poshmark and Instagram, they do have underscores. So it is a little frustrating. I wish that I had um, thought of something where I didn't have to use any underscores. Just Rebel Rose Co. was not available. So yeah, I wish that I had thought a little more about that and been able to find, looked on the different platforms that I wanted to use and made sure that that username was available. But at the same time, it's hard to find something that's available on all the platforms you want to use. I think of a cute username. Um, I also kind of wish I'd done something with like the word thrift in it, but I like Robo Rose Co. and we're sticking with that for now. Um, I have thought about changing it, but we'll see. There's so many different things. I'm not sure like what to talk about. I'm just going to talk about like different categories, if that makes sense. So first we're going to talk about photos. You don't need fancy setup to do photos. So I do have, I have these studio lights that I purchased on Amazon and I really, really do like them, but they take up a lot of space. So if you are just selling things out of your closet or you're just starting out, you don't need anything like that. Just use, if you take pictures with a window in the same room, just get some natural light. So people even take their pictures outside. So there's also a bunch of apps that you can use. My favorite app is PicTapGo. That app, I believe it's $2.99 and then you just have it forever. 
and now you can batch photos you don't have to do each photo at a time it's so nice they're not called presets but it's basically like a preset i use the very first one that shows up it's called lights on it just brightens up your picture and it literally helps with everything okay and then the next tip is to use photo room you can use the free version i would advise taking your photos from a little farther back because then you can crop out the photo room logo which if you want it to automatically be cropped out you have to pay for that so just get the free version take your photos a little farther back crop out the photo room logo so when i first started for the pictures that i took on the wall I use, I can't remember the name of the app, it was called like Eraser or something, and I would go around the item, I would go around really slowly in the app, and I would like color in the background to make it more white, and I literally spent hours doing that for like $10 listings. Um, yeah, don't do that. Uh, use photo room or just, you don't even have to have a white background. You can do whatever you want, really. So I take my pictures on the wall here and then I do have a white fuzzy rug, stereotypical uh, reseller thing. Um, I used to have greenery on the side, but it's just, I don't know. I just like to keep it simple. When I started out, I will insert a couple pictures of what my listings looked like. I used to do a lot of flat lays. I did the like fake hardwood floor flat lays. I wasted a lot of time and money on props and stuff. So people do amazing flat lays, but honestly, I think people just want to see the items. So I either just take a picture on my wall or I take it on my white rug like you know with shorts or something make sure that you take pictures of the brand the size the material content the front the back uh any flaws i see a lot of people posting pictures of items where it's just like you know like it's just zoomed in on like the top part of a pair of jeans or the bottom part of a dress is cut off and you don't know if it's a maxi dress or a short dress so make sure you get the entire item in the photo make sure that you are taking just a clear bright photo it doesn't have to be instagram worthy you just need a clear bright photo of the item front back any flaws oh one other tip is take your pictures in square mode because poshmark will like zoom in your pictures into a square so if you take a picture in like the regular mode where it's like a rectangle you're gonna have some of it cropped off and i used to have a problem with that just take your pictures in square mode it's super easy all you have to do is i think slide up on the picture thing and then you click on one of the options and then you can click square mode or it's like one on, one by one or something. It's like numbers. I hope that makes sense. Um, if you are looking for stock photos, so technically Poshmark does not allow you to use stock photos. Most people use them anyway. I think that using a picture of the item on a person, also you can model your photos. I don't do that because my body is not made for modeling photos, but honestly, everybody is made for modeling photos. So doesn't matter what size you are model your friends if you want to um but i don't do that also it's time consuming so if you want to use stock photos to show what the item looks like on a person you can use this thing called google lens you just open up the app the google app you click on the little picture thing and then you take a picture of whatever the item is and it will bring up that item that is found online and that's a great way to find style names a great way to find stock photos so yeah that is my tips on pictures Next, I'm going to talk about listings. So you want all your pictures nice and clear. And then in the title, you want if you you want the brand name. If there's a style name and you know what it is, you want the style name. And then you want a nice long description. Poshmark just recently said something about how they want short descriptions. So I don't know. There's Right now, if you are new to Poshmark, there's like this whole thing going on with the algorithm. People are upset about it. I'm upset about it, but they just switched it back, but they're saying different things about what they want. So it's like, I don't know. And these, this is like an example of one of my listings. Like I would say high rise, dark blue, um, made well, skinny jeans. And if there's a style name, I'd put that in there. And if there's a button fly, I'd put that in there. You just want to put as much information as you can in there. Make sure in the listing, you put the brand, you restate the brand, the style name, all the information that you put in the title. You want the description, condition, mention any flaws very clearly and have pictures of them. Measurements are very important to not do measurements. I do them now, but I swear every time I forget to do them on one item out of my whole closet. Someone will comment and want the measurements. For tops, just do the length, pit to pit. There's pictures online here about how to measure different items. For pants, you wanna do the waist, the rise, which is from the crotch to the top, and then from the crotch to the bottom, which is the inseam. Those measurements, especially on pants, are very helpful. Material content is also super helpful, especially if it's something nice like silk, wool, cashmere, 
but a lot of people, sometimes people are allergic to certain fabrics, so they need to know what's in it. And then also a lot of people will be looking for a specific kind of content. So if it's something really nice, like silk, wool, tensile, something like that, I will also add that to the description um, so people can look it up. And then keywords. Some people do like a million keywords and they do like all these uh, popular brands. Don't do that. That's spammy because some people will be like, um, you know, they'll do their description and then below they'll be like, free people, show me your moo-moo, Lululemon. That's so annoying. Don't do that because people aren't going to want to buy from you and your listings will show up. Uh, not to people who are actually searching for them, just people that are searching for other things. So I always see a lot of new people do that. So make sure you don't do that. But you can use keywords like boho, uh, minimalist, capsule wardrobe, you know, striped, polka dot, all those words. Uh, Poshmark also has a keyword thing now um, where you can add three of them. I don't know yet if that really does anything. I've been doing it just because um, it only takes a second. I really don't know if it's worth it though. Okay, you know what? I'm so I'm going to take a quick detour. I'm going to talk about some Poshmark myths and some mistakes I made. And then, then I'm going to talk about pricing, inventory, comps, storage, how to store your items, shipping, what kind of inventory and where to get inventory, and how to make money, uh, tips and tricks, and cases. So I'm going to take a quick detour and talk about some myths and some things, some mistakes that I made on Poshmark, and then I will get back to those topics. So if you want to hear about any of those things, stick around. Okay, so Poshmark is a very social app, and they promote sharing and engaging with other followers a lot. But there are some things that Poshmark kind of promotes that are not necessarily worth your time. They just want to keep you active on the app. So no shade to Poshmark, but just because they want you to do these things doesn't mean that you should. Some of it is a waste of your time and your time is valuable. Your time is money. Okay, so Poshmark encourages community sharing a lot. So there is self-sharing and there is community sharing. Self-sharing is when you share your own listings, which is good. You want to do that all day long. That is a really good thing to do. They also, they talk about community shares and that is sharing other people's listings. So the way to get sales is you want your listings to show up top in the search. So if I search a pair of Lululemon high rise yoga pants, um, the items that are gonna show up are just shared items. So again, with the algorithm thing, they just did a change, but now they changed it back. So I'm gonna stick with this for now. So you want to share your items up. When you share other people's items, they only share to your followers. And that doesn't mean anything. People don't shop their feed. Most people don't. You're looking for a specific size, a specific style, a specific brand. Poshmark talks a lot about followers and stuff. I think I have like 150,000 followers. That literally means nothing. There's people with like 500 followers that could be making the same amount of sales as me. Because when I started Poshmark, I follow, I think I followed like a million people or half a million people. How many hours did I waste doing that? Because the people following you back, they're just following you back because they want followers. You just want people to buy your stuff. The social aspect of Poshmark is promoted so much, but it's a waste of time. So my advice is do not community share unless it's like your friend or something. I mean, or you can share people's stuff back. Some people think it's like rude to not share back, but like, I don't have a lot of time. I'm just gonna share my own stuff. Share your own listings. No community sharing, no following. The Poshmark was suggesting that you comment on new poshers, like about me, uh, you know, or whatever. It has the listing that has like their name or whatever. That's a waste of time. People don't need to be welcomed to Poshmark. It's just a website that you sell clothes on. And they were like, welcome this person in, like it was like for a while, it was like, it, you, need, you should like welcome three people a day or whatever. You don't need to welcome people to a random website. There's millions of people on that website. You don't need to welcome them in. Uh, I'm getting heated. I'm like, you know how many hours I wasted saying welcome to fucking Poshmark? They don't, nobody needs to do that. That's not gonna make them buy from your closet. The reason that you're on Poshmark is to make money. And people aren't gonna come to your closet and then just happen to be like, oh, I actually did want this uh, extra small striped jumpsuit. They're, like you sell you sell things to people to buy them. People are gonna be looking for your items in the search bar. So yeah, no community sharing, no welcoming, uh, no following. Share your own listings a lot though. So this is controversial topic is bots because Poshmark wants you to share a lot and bots were not talked about for a long time. Now a lot of people, a lot of full-time resellers and big YouTubers have been coming out uh, talking about bots. So they're technically not allowed. It's a form of automation, 
but the thing is most people have full-time jobs they have children they have other things in their life that they need to do and especially if you're like a full-time reseller and you have 5,000 listings or 1,000 listings you could spend all day sharing your closet like once so this is controversial but if you do want to use a bot um, I have used a couple different ones and the one I'm using right now is Posher VA I will put a link down below if you want to use my code I can't remember what the what you get off but I will list it here so yeah if you want to use my code you can and yeah all right another thing that is a little bit controversial is parties hosting them host picks um I've done one so I used to always like go to the posh parties and share all my listings into them I don't ever pay attention to that now there's nothing wrong with it I just share I have my bot sharing all the time hosting posh parties this is just my opinion or my experience okay because other people could have had different experiences where they hosted a posh party and they had so much fun and they made a million dollars I hosted a posh party once and it was like a year ago I think what you had to do was I went through like a million, million sweaters because I was hosting like the best in sweaters. I liked a million of them. I had my little thing to type out like I'm choosing this as a host pick, 47 million emojis. And then during the posh party, you share those items. You put that like comment of you're picking this as a host pick. And then people can see all the items that are picked as host picks. There's like a joke in the reseller community that host picks are like a curse because People, whenever you get a host pick, it's like that item always ends up sitting forever. It doesn't really mean anything. Um, I've never gone and looked at host picks during a posh party, and I don't think that most people do. And even if they do, is that item going to be a size, style, brand that they're specifically looking for? Probably not. It's, posh parties are fun for other people, but in my opinion, I spent two hours sharing other people's listings, commenting, and I didn't make any sales during that posh party. Now, I had, at the time, I think like 1,400 listings, but... I don't know why I didn't make any sales during the posh party. I felt like it was a waste of my time and I could have been listing during that time or doing some other more productive activity. So yeah, I won't host another posh party. Some people do them. They make sales during them. They have fun doing them. Do that. That's awesome. For me, that felt like a waste of time and it was just um, more of a ploy to get into the social aspect. And yeah, I'm not into that. So if you are into the social aspect of Poshmark, join Instagram. I have made so many friends, like real friends. Some of them I've met in real life in the reseller community. My Instagram is rebel underscore rose underscore co. If you watch this video, you should DM me and let me know so I can make sure I'm following you. Yeah, there's a huge community of people who do this and there's people that will share tips, tricks, all kinds of information. Almost everything I learned from reselling Besides through my own trial and error, um, I learned from the YouTube community and the reselling community on Poshmark. So make sure you join that if you are into the social aspect because over there, it makes more sense than on Poshmark. Okay, so now we are going to talk about inventory. You can sell, I would first off, start just selling things out of your own closet. I forgot to mention this at the beginning. Um, I was just on a podcast talking about reselling and Poshmark, and I also share a lot of information there. So um, the podcast was Money Your Way. You can find it on all different podcast listening platforms, and I will link it down below. So make sure you check that out. I first got started on Poshmark with selling things out of my own closet, and I also spent a lot of time listing things that were not worth selling, and I still do that sometimes. I'm not gonna lie. So first, I would go through your closet, whatever you don't wear. The way to tell if something is worth Worth listing is you look up comps on Poshmark comparable solds so let's say I go through my closet and I find uh, okay like I find this pair of Nike shoes and I'm like should I bother listing these Nike shoes so I can go to Poshmark go to the shoe section go to tennis shoes or sneakers or whatever if there's a style name on here you can type it in okay so this is wild trail so I would type in Nike Wild Trail tennis shoes or sneakers or athletic shoes. And then I would sort, I would sort all sizes and then you just go to solds and you can see, you can scroll through and see how much these have sold for in the past. And if they're only selling for 10 bucks, maybe you only want a couple bucks and that's fine for you. Or if they're selling for a lot, then you definitely want to list them. So list, looking up comps is a great thing. I was so bad at this at the beginning. I listed things like, I see a lot of new Poshmark 
um, sellers listing things for three, five, seven dollars. That's not worth it in my opinion. Poshmark does take a fee. I believe this is correct. Um, three ninety five for anything under twenty dollars or fifteen dollars, and then after that they take twenty percent. So. It's not that much, but if you're selling things really cheap, it can be a lot. So, you know, go through your closet, look up comps on things, and then if you sell those things and you're like, ooh, I really want to start reselling, and you go to the thrift store. So I would advise, watch some people's YouTube videos. Watch some of my YouTube videos. Um, but also do your own research. When you're in the thrift store, go through, look up each brand. Look up comps on everything. I used to just Google the brand, and I'd be like, this resold, or this sells for $500 new, and then resale value would be nothing. So remember that resale value and retail value are not the same. You want to look up comps on everything and be careful what you pay for things. I paid up for a lot of stuff when I first started reselling. Um, some stuff that I still have listed in my closet. Find a place where you can get cheap stuff. Some Goodwills are really expensive. I go to smaller mom and pop thrift stores more often and I find amazing stuff for cheap there. Price your items accordingly. I price my items a little bit high to give room for offers. You can lower the price on make a deal days and Poshmark will give the person a discounted shipping um, if you lower it by 10%. And then you can also send offers to people and you can either give a shipping discount or not. That's a great way to make sales. There's also a bundling feature on Poshmark and you can set a bundle discount or you can individually send discounts on bundles. If I get a like on, if I have somebody like a bunch of my items, I will click on their bundle and I will be like, thanks for liking my items. If you want to bundle a bunch of stuff together, I will give you a great deal and that also can help you get a bunch of sales. Storage. If at first you're just selling stuff out of your closet you can leave it in your closet you can put it under your bed there's so many different ways to store you can have a clothing rack i'm going to insert a video right here of i made this video a long time ago so the video quality is not good i think like my voice is off for some reason like the audio is off but i have a video of how i store over a thousand items and yeah, it's a great way to, if you do end up having a lot of items, this video can be helpful on how to store those items. So there's so many different ways to store your items. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about shipping. And I really hope that I am explaining these things in a concise way. Feel free to ask questions or DM me on Instagram if you have more questions. Shipping is anything under five pounds is, I believe it's $7.49. I could be off by like a couple cents, but... That is good for larger items because on other sites you would pay a lot more, but for smaller items, it's not really worth it. Like if you have a bracelet and you list it for five bucks, you have to remember Poshmark takes a fee and that you are gonna be charging the buyer seven something for shipping this item. So that's why bundles are really awesome. You can also lock things together, you know? You can use any priority mail, poly mailers, boxes, or plain. You can use the Amazon box. You can use any plain boxes or poly mailers. If you go on USPS and you go to free shipping supplies, anything that's priority mail, not priority mail express, not any of the other things, just priority mail. You can request free shipping supplies and you can use those to ship your items out. And also schedule pickups. If you can't make it to the post office, they can come and get your stuff. Just be careful where you live because there are porch pirates and they can come and steal your shit. <laughs> so, um, okay, here's another thing that is a waste of time that Poshmark promotes. Poshmark promotes fancy, cute packaging. So, there, I feel like there's two reasons why people sell clothing. Um, you want to make money and you want to be sustainable. You want to, you know, keep the cycle of used clothing going. So Poshmark wants you to write a thank you note and use tissue paper and uh, ribbons and all this kinds of stuff. You don't need to do that. At first, I spent money on that shit. I spent time writing thank you notes. When you buy from any store in America, they do not give you a thank you note. You're buying a used clothing or whatever. You don't need, they don't need a thank you note. Like, have you ever gone to a store and then they're like, hold on, let me write thank you. No, no one does that. It's just a waste of paper. Um, and you don't need tissue paper and all this stuff. When you buy from any store in America, the item just comes in a box and you're happy with it. So I do use on my more expensive items. I do keep them in plastic bags. I know that is not sustainable, but I do store my items in the garage. And that also can be helpful. Like if it's raining or snowing, and you know water gets into the package so i try to just do that on my more expensive items but yeah do not waste your time doing cute packaging there are people that will complain every once in a while but 
what I think is that I wasted time and money writing thank you notes and wrapping things in tissue paper. I would maybe do that if I sold a $200 item now, you know, but especially for cheaper items, that's a waste of your time. Just put the item in a box, ship it out. The thing I should have mentioned during inventory is that there's a lot of different places to get inventory. Your own closet. Tell your family members that you're starting to sell things online. They might give you stuff. Tell your friends. There's retail arbitrage where you buy clearance items or regular priced items that or for whatever reason cheap um at real like retail stores to resell online there's buy sell trade stores consignment stores my favorite thrift stores there is the goodwill bins which is you pay by the pound there's so many places where to buy inventory i'm going to share a couple more things and then i'm going to be done you can relist your items after 60 days or after however long you want because on poshmark once you have lowered your price if you raise the price back up Poshmark still remembers the lowest price that you've done. So if you try, if you list something for 25 bucks and then eventually you will lower it down to 15 and then you raise back up to 20 and you send an offer for 20, or sorry, you raise it back up to 25 and then you send an offer for 20, it's not gonna go to anybody because Poshmark will remember that you've gone lower than that. So you wanna relist your items and you can use the copy feature and you can relist that way. You just click copy, go to a new listing, you delete the thing they say it that says copy at the front and then you just post it. Make sure you delete your old one. So those show up as new listings. Another thing is that likes don't matter. I, if I have likes on an item, I used to never relist it, but likes don't matter. If they haven't bought it and then you've been sending all these discounts, you want fresh eyes to see it. The likes don't matter, just relist it. Send offers to likers, send messages to buyers, not in an annoying way. Oh, another thing I was gonna talk about is cases. So Poshmark has no return policy unless the item is not as described. So if it's damaged, if you put the wrong size, something like that, there are people that don't like that and they will make up excuses or they will say like this doesn't fit like a large or whatever. So you will be able to say your piece in the message and then Poshmark decides on that. So yeah, um, I think that is all that I planned on talking about. That does not cover everything I'm aware. <laughs> I will be making more tips videos in the future, but I just wanted to share a lot of things that I spent time doing that I didn't need to do. When it comes to Poshmark, things that they tell you are important and they're not another, oh, another thing, Posh and Bad, ugh. Posh Ambassador status. They now have Posh Ambassador status too. Honestly, it doesn't really do anything for me. So I like having it because it's like, okay, this is another qualification, whatever, but it doesn't really change your sales. Um, and they just came out with Posh Ambassador too. And I also saw a thing where you have to maintain some certain things to keep it like quarterly. And one of the things, if I don't know if I read this wrong, but it said you have to do 50,000 shares quarterly or a certain amount of stuff quarterly. Like it's not just ever, cause I qualify now, but it said like, oh, in the next quarter, if we'll see if you requalify. And no, I'm not sharing 50,000 or whatever listings to qualify for this thing that doesn't really do anything for me. Um, that's my opinion. It's great if you, you know, wanna work towards it, but yeah, um, I don't think it really means that much. So, yeah, I hope those tips helped and I hope my mistakes helped you. Again, if you don't have a Poshmark closet, use the code rubble underscore rose underscore co for $10 off your first purchase and check out my Instagram, like, comment, share, um, subscribe to this channel, hit the bell notification. Um, that all means a lot to me and I really hope you enjoyed this video. Okay, bye.